Welcome to the Agents of the Roundtable Wiki Community AMA. Every Monday, we discuss Secret Network and its applications with guests from all around the network. This is an audio recording of the AMA. We hope you enjoy. Anyway, welcome everyone. Welcome to you, Waffle. I'm glad you stayed, uh, stayed awake for this one. Hey, thanks, Erzman. Thanks for having me. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, Stephen. Can you hear us? Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. Um, realizing I'm a bit of a <laughs> stupid for not uh, reminding you that you should be on the phone. But uh, welcome anyway. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, Steve. Hey, Waffle, how you going? So it's a good... I'm good, man. How are you? Thanks. Is this a standard time for you, always waking up at 7 to start coding away? Pretty much. Pretty much. That is a early bird. Uh, early bird takes the worm, right? So... Glad you are a morning yeah, yeah, person. Yeah. Just... Show us your show us your productivity. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, <laughs> lot to, lot to do right now. So uh, just just waking up and and cracking away at this uh, limit orders thing. So um, so yeah, yeah. So let, let's get started. Um, maybe both of you can quickly introduce yourself. Um, I guess uh, I'm a constant host here, so people know who I am. But uh, welcome anyway to Age of the Roundtable. We do this every week. Have a guest from somewhere within the secret network to talk about what they're building, what they're making, what they're trying to achieve. So if you can give a small introduction of who you are, what you do in the ecosystem, um, maybe we can start with Waffle and then Steven, you can go after to dive into Button. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks, Richmond. I'm Waffle. Uh, I've been part of the community of Secret Network for a bit more than a year now. Um, so I came to Secret Network when uh, I heard about private DeFi and uh, how I could leverage my secret um, Moneros in DeFi. And uh, slowly I started sticking around and uh, started helping a little bit Steven with the community of the Button Group and like started involved with the, with the support committee. And uh, yeah, you always find me around uh, either on Telegram or Discord and uh, either talking about DeFi or privacy. So feel free to reach out. Yeah, please go ahead, uh, Stephen, if you want to introduce yourself as well quickly. Uh, hi, guys. Um, I am uh steven from button dot group and uh um I'm, I'm pretty sure i've seen most of the uh nft pictures here so uh, i'm sure you're familiar with the site um we've started off first off as a, uh, a yield optimizer for um for uh secret swap but then that's kind of evolved into um button swap and, and other and other tools um, really out of necessity, and uh, and we're at our current um, current project, uh, which is building um, limit orders into Secret Network um, to counter the uh, the issue right now, which is that um, many networks and uh, protocols are, are struggling against um, slippage due to low liquidity. Um, due to the bear market, and uh, that's where we're at. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you're diving straight in. Uh, your motivation is clear. It's like there is not enough liquidity. So for, for us, the only option is uh, making it so that people don't have to incur any slippage because they can set the limit order. Um, so maybe you want to dive a little bit into, into the thought process, like how did you, besides there is not enough liquidity, why limit orders? Why not uh, see if there's another way to just increase the current liquidity or why not build a, a DEX that um, that has a different algorithm or different 
with you, you can potentially have more liquidity. Why, why was limit orders the, the solution here? Uh, I think, um, well, I think I think it's just more of a more of something that people um, want and and generally use. Uh, uh, like the if if you go into whatever your centralized exchange is um, for anything, um, you know, and in terms of any product, uh, you'll find that m most people won't do a a market buy. You know, it's it's almost um, it's almost like a like a like a joke sort of thing to to smash market buy things um, um, during the bull run. So you know, it's it's not something that people would strategically do usually. So I think limit orders is is just another step into um, you know, decentralizing something that uh, most people do on a centralized service. Um, we we didn't really plan to build out on that, um, but uh, you know, due to the circumstances, I think it's a good time to focus in on it. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much the reason. Like, you really got to ask yourself, like, when you use Binance or Coinbase or whatever you use, like, how often do you actually use the the market buy option? And um, and for myself personally, I, it's pretty much never. Yeah, it really is a bit of a weird system indeed, uh, where we have grown accustomed to having to market buy if we're using a, a decentralized exchange. But actually, with uh, yeah more and more protocols coming up, we're actually doing limit orders. It becomes uh, hopefully again more normalized to, to set your current buy like you would do if you would trade any stock or buy on a centralized exchange. So. Uh, it is clear why this feature is, is, is more familiar and also just has a as a good UX for users. Um, maybe to uh, to quickly dive in now we're talking limit orders. Like, how how does such a system uh, evolve? Like, what what parts does it consist of? I've heard a bit about you having to use a bot in order to to execute orders, but the bot, of course, can't place orders, so a user has to do it themselves. Like, how does it work where a user places a, an, an order and someone else gets to fit it? Like, how does this counterparty action work on a decentralized uh, platform as secret? Okay. Um, well, just to, just to take one step back, uh, I would say that the initially the um the market order thing would have been um the first step and and like a very important step as well um in terms of like the evolution of DeFi. uh um, just like in real life uh limit orders would be like the next step in the trading process so you know as people are figuring out the technology and and how it works with blockchain market market um uh, orders was the the uh the simpler step and therefore it was like the next step um and and they've done that uh via uh, liquidity pools um and they uh and like a mathematical formula to get people like a um an amount based on the ratio of two or multiple tokens and um and that would have kept the uh the gas quite consistent for for the um the user so so really the uh the biggest issue is the the gas issue um as as you guys would know that um the amount of gas required is based on the um the amount of computations the computer has to make so with a with a market swap it's just asking the pool you know how what like going through a mathematical formula on the pool saying what's the ratio of the two tokens how much of the two tokens are there and how much do you want to swap and it'll just run a math formula and it'll be quite the same amount of calculation for each uh calculation um so the gas is quite consistent um for the user 
Um, however, for limit orders, it, it's, the, it's the gas and the computation that goes can, can get out of control because let's say um, a million, put in, million people put in a uh, $1 um, order for secret and then, and then somebody comes in and puts in a uh, 1 million secret for one, $1 sale. Um, that gas would be much larger than if there was one person offering to buy 1 million secret for a dollar and one person offering to sell 1 uh, million secret for $1 million. Um, so, the, so the gas would range greatly. So that, that is the, the big challenge there. Um, and, and yeah, and so, so that's why, uh, trying to keep the gas quite consistent for the user is a priority and also, um, for button dot group to be able to process those transactions without running into, well, while keeping it viable, um, it is pretty much the, the aim and uh and what we're what we're trying to build in right now um so that's the first um explanation of the problem and the situation um you wouldn't have that problem on a centralized exchange because uh, uh on on a centralized exchange it's just a computer it doesn't matter how many computations they're going to do they're just taking a percentage cut and it doesn't matter about you know because they're not sending they're not writing anything to the trans to uh on the on the chain when you make a swap there um the only time they're making a, a right to the chain is when the user withdraws their funds to a different wallet um or, or, the, or the user will pay some gas to send into the wallet but everything else is just on their computers just moving around numbers which doesn't cost them any gas uh, so they don't have that problem um do you want me to keep going i did did, uh, did, did you want to ask some questions about that or does that make sense? No, you can keep going, but it's, it's something I actually didn't think about, uh, the, whole, the whole gas issue and how this has such an, yeah, basically a, a very big effect on how you develop such an application, as in to keep it constant, you need to, you need to make sure somehow that you always do the same amount of computations, but indeed, dependent on on how many people put out an order and how big your order is, this this differs greatly. So I'm I'm curious what the answer is to this uh, to this ordeal and, and, and how you fix that um, with the the limit orders that are coming up. Okay. So um. So how how we've approached the problem um, is that. For the for the user, uh, they're going to just put in an, an order for you know let's say s secret to to Bitcoin at some some rate, and they're just creating the order. So th there's no computation happening on their end. They're just putting in um, the amount that they're putting in, and then the amount that they expect, and that's it. So for them, the, the comp computation is exactly the same and you can always guarantee a very consistent gas amount unless there's, you know, some huge congestion with the, um, with the network. But generally speaking, the computation is the same. So the gas should be very similar. Um, now, with that information, um, Button Dock Group will get that information and then crunch the numbers on on a on a centralized server. So that takes a lot of the computation out of the out of the blockchain and onto a centralized server. And then with that, um, a, a bot will, if there are opportunities for a trade, will trade those two trades against each other. Um, we are charging an execution fee for uh, an order. So that should cover the, um, the transaction um, against each other. So technically, uh, let's say um, there's a variation 
in the amount. So let's say, um, uh, let's say you put in an order for a uh, secret to USDT um, for two secret for two dollars, and um, and Waffle puts in an order for uh, one secret, um, you know, for one dollar. Uh, that transaction will go through and the execution fee will cover like waffles execution fee will cover waffles transaction and part of your transaction and then your leftover uh transaction uh, amount will um, be available for the next person um for the next order that needs to fill and uh and generally speaking um uh, any any transaction one person's transaction will be fully filled and will be covered by um that execution fee and anything left over will be covered by either another person's execution fee um, if there's left over for yourself or your execution fee eventually when yours is left over and somebody else's um uh it ha has a bit of leftover happening so that's the so that's one way that we're handling it um the other would be that we are also setting up a bot to trade um somebody's order against the different um different uh decentralized exchange um like the the liquidity pools so right now we're just figuring out an algorithm to um to, to get the rate that, that you want and then and then um and then monitoring the rates available from the decentralized exchange pools and if something matches up then it'll trade against that and if the execution fee doesn't co cover it then we'll wait for a rate that's a little bit better um before the trade happens and and the, and the uh, leftover amount should cover the execution fee. I hope I hope that makes a bit of sense. I know that's like a lot of, of <laughs> a lot of words and, yeah. and and such. No, it's uh, it's very well explained, and that that last bit uh, actually seems really interesting to me. Um, so if there is no if there is no direct counterparty then why not swap against the pool if you can get the same rate? Uh, this, this makes, of course, a lot of sense. And it's, it's something that is not feasible if you're uh, developing limit orders on a blockchain or, or like if the blockchain is only the limit order application and there are no pools, then this is not an option. But I imagine that it's easier to integrate this solution simply because you can use the button swap aggregator contracts to to find the correct um, the correct paths right and, and estimate um the return of like like how much secret you could get for filling uh, x order and, and seeing if you actually can agree to the to the price this user set so that that's cool yeah the, every, everything just should be uh you know in the simplest form just be a uh, an order would just be a from amount and a to amount and and that's it and um and that should apply for you know that should apply for something like uh what QG does as well so with this latest upgrade i haven't had a look into it but I'd be very surprised if they had a different system. Well, a different interface, anyways, for the for the user. Where it's just like, you know, um, uh, here are the available orders. Like I put one in, and then they they crunch it for you. So, um, so yeah, like it it should open up really every um, exchange interface uh, as long as the bots can can handle it. Yeah, you and you quickly mention um, mention Kujira, who was also um, yeah, already has already developed a limit order application and is running on its own mm -hmm. blockchain. 
Can you maybe mm-hmm. quickly dive into like what are the differences between how Button Group has designed their application or where it's situated in the ecosystem in comparison to, to what Kujira is delivering? Is that just about privacy or is there, there more to that? Uh, I've got to be completely honest and say that I've like looked at Kujira and, and I haven't really looked too deep into it. Um, yeah, I, I, I just got to be honest and, and just I, I haven't really looked terribly too into it. Um, the, probably the biggest thing right now would be uh, would be this privacy factor. But at the same time, um, I, I'm not even sure. Like we're, we're trialing having it private right now um, because, uh, you know, some of the Biden group members were saying, yeah, we prefer the, um, the orders were private. Um, well, only only privy to like button dot group, the admin there. But yeah, like, I, I I wouldn't be able to tell you if there was any major difference, just because I haven't really used what they're doing. Yeah, that, that's uh, completely fair. <laughs> I guess the difference is is probably both the privacy element, the fact that it's on a on a single chain. Um, and as far as I know, it's not open source. Uh, and I, I, I would expect that uh, the code from Buzzer Group would completely be open source because of the, the, the small funding from the community pool you guys got. Yeah, well, the, um, the, uh, the smart contract is definitely open source, but um, we, we used to have the actual app um, open source. But to be honest, we were getting so many like emails from white hat hackers that um you know going up like just scanning the code and saying oh you know there's this little problem um you know what's the bounty for it and stuff like that and it was just getting um a little bit out of control and a little bit worrisome actually so um we just decided for the meanwhile while we're working on other stuff we'd close it up um, but, but later on, we definitely consider opening that up for people and, um, uh, and, uh, yeah, but, but, in, but in all reality for the, for the user, the, the most important parts would be just checking out the smart contract to see that the, um, uh, that the funds that the admin have no access to their funds. So like, you know, there's no chance of theft or being able to freeze out an account um, or saying like, oh, yeah, we've run out of your money because your tokens are always just in that smart contract um, unless you want to cancel or the order gets filled and and that's about it. Yeah, I guess that already covers uh, the main uh, verified point of, of, the, of having a decentralized contract. Um, you, you quickly mentioned that um, some, uh, some community members would like the orders to be private. So from that, I understand that for at least the first iteration of this, uh, the entire application that the orders that you're placing are, are public and, and people can see what order a specific wallet has out. Um, sorry, could you repeat that? Sorry, my bad. Yeah, no problem. Um, my question was that you just said that um, there might be more privacy features later on. So being able to, to create a private order. So as soon as the application launches somewhere an upcoming month or a little bit later, uh, the orders you can place are public. So people would be able to see what wallet created what limit order. Well, actually we're going the other way around. Um, I, I was a little bit surprised because I thought everyone would want to see the orders, but they, uh, but most people actually, like we had a little vote and most people said that they wanted the, the orders to be private um, uh, for a while and then, and then go from there. So, um, yeah, we'll start off with that and then, and then see what happens. And then later on, if the, uh, if the user decides to, 
Um, if a user wants us to open up the data, then we can do that. Um, but yeah, at, at this point, um, it, it will be private to begin with, and then um, and then we'll proceed on from there. It could be interesting if the if the orders weren't private, if the orders were public, mm -hmm. but you couldn't see which wallet has put that order. So at least you have that on the on the market. What's going on? Yeah, that could be interesting. I I, I would also like consider. I also thought people would want to see that, but um, the the thing is though, uh, people would be able to figure it out just because it'd be like someone's interacted with the you know uh, the S XMR contract and then suddenly there's a new order up um so so yeah so that's that would be like the, the the biggest issue yeah that's a bummer yeah i, I think um yeah I think Ch trade, are... trade analysis always is a is a, a thing to take into account yeah Sorry, go ahead. You were you were going to say something. Uh, no, no, no. I, I was just um, I was just asking uh, with with what you said about um, about Kujira, uh, how you were saying that the um, that their contract that they're not open source right now, but they're going to be open source. Um, is that? Uh, do you think? Oh no, there, there's this. Well, they must have changed it recently because um, I'm looking at like the the smart contract now for uh for their for their fin smart contract, and it and it looks like you can see everything. So, um, it would <laughs> once I get some time, it will be nice to kind of have a look at and. Uh, and then how they do things. I think probably the, the biggest thing though, is that, um, because they own the chain, um, maybe they probably just don't have to worry about gas at all, you know, cause they'll just be able to, I don't know, they'll probably, maybe I think they just get themselves a ton of tokens and, and put it into like a, a, um, foundation to pay for the fees, um, to get that to happen. So, uh, yeah, you'd, you'd have to wonder what their, their process is. Yeah, when you design it as an application chain, you, you get a lot more options, of course. Um, not quite sure how they do that personally. I thought that their, their contracts, or at least the, the, the biggest part of their code base was still closed source, including the, the stable coin, but uh, glad to see some of it uh, being open sourced because... Um, it's just important if you're going to use an application that you can somehow verify that uh, that it's that it's legit or it's at least not very easily stealing your money. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. to to dive in a little bit more about on the privacy part, um, if your limit order is private, is the order book then also closed, or can people see the orders that are open? Can we see the depth of the order book? No, no, it, it would have to be like everything would have to be private and there'd have to be like a different indicator. Um, yeah, like we're, we're yet to, we yet to kind of figure out that UI UX for a different indicator because if we made that order book public, then people would just be able to, to match things up. Uh, or, or maybe we might put a delay on it or something like that. Um, yeah, but to, we're, for the meanwhile, we'd have to keep it uh, private if we want uh, actual privacy. Yeah, I guess what the only thing people need is um, an indicator mm -hmm. which is telling them how much slippage they will have. It's like, for what, uh, if I buy this... Um, like if I market buy or if I fill the orders via sell or whatever, how much mm -hmm. potential slippage would like through how many price points would I run? Like how many orders will I fill? Uh, I guess th so the slippage is the only thing people really need to know, right? And in theory, the contract could calculate that without 
opening the um, open sourcing the information would just require oh, um, uh, a transaction, which is maybe not super UX friendly. The, the the user would would not suffer any any um uh would not I uh, yeah would not really suffer any slippage or anything because um, all the user is doing is putting a like this is the amount that I'm offering and this is the amount that I expect back um, and and that's it and they'll get exactly that amount um, you know when it when it's due so. Uh, and it's not gonna, and it's gonna be different from like all of these. I, I don't know how Kajira works, but all of these should be very different from how a centralized exchange works because there's always going to be a a delay of sorts, um, as there is that you know six second plus uh, block height. Um, so you know, if if you were if you were using it on a centralized exchange, sure, you might put in an order at you know let's say 20,000 bitcoin and suddenly the price swings greatly um but as long as uh you've put that order in at selling bitcoin at 20,000 and you haven't sold it when the price is higher you're always going to get um as long as the order fills that um that price um and uh you'd, you'd pretty much want to do that in the same way with um uh with uh, a a blockchain limit order function where you just look at the current price right now even have a and compare it to what you can get on the uh on the market um on a, on a normal on a normal DeFi market pool and go okay this is the available rate uh, i want i want a, like a better rate and then just put that better rate in and then just leave it until it gets filled um, and then and assume that the well not yeah assume that there's always going to be a delay because uh, not only the block height but um, you know other orders ahead um, that need to get filled uh, there's like a certain number of transactions that can get get filled per block et cetera et cetera so there are limitations so we are going to have to put up some info that um, that instructs the user that, hey, it might look a bit similar, um, but there are differences and a lot of those differences are due to um, how blockchain works. So that, does that make sense? Yeah, so it's a, it's a small UX part where uh, you cannot expect your order to, to instantly fill completely. And, and what I was speaking to with the, like the, the comment about slippage is more that let's say someone could market sell or market buy on the order book, then what would happen? Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess that's not something you, you were, uh, you, you want to happen anyway. You, you want people to just place their order and have it filled at exactly that price. And if there is, a counterparty which only has um, fifty percent of the liquidity you put a buy in for, and then only half of your order gets filled, and the other half just waits there till there is uh, uh, either a pool or another person who will fill that order. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. That, that's that's pretty much how you want to do it. If if there was somebody that wanted to. Um, to you know, try to try to push the order at, at like a slightly worse rate, but for a bigger amount, they just put it in at that rated amount, and and um, I, I guess you just have to uh, because that's exactly what that person would get um, in in the end. So that's up to them. Or I guess if they if if they were that desperate to sell or buy, they would just go do that on maybe partially on on the um on a market buy and then the rest on limit orders or or something of that sort yeah, i mean if you can if you can trade against pools then there's actually very little reason to ever use uh, a pool again i mean you can just place a limit limit uh, sell or buy for uh, a cent or a few cents less or more um, and have the orders be instantly filled half through the through the order book and half through pools and get the best price so 
really is the sort of the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm like, I know I keep saying I'm, I'm close, I'm close, I'm close, but uh, uh, it, it is like very close to being like that. The uh, like the algorithms are very close to being released and um, and and set to work, and um, and already just while I'm I'm demoing, um, uh, you know, I've been I've been getting much better much better rates than I would have got if I just um, market swallowed even on the aggregator just by putting in like a a um, a, a sell order for. S atom at a at a much higher rate, um, and I think um, yeah, I, I, like I, I agree with you. Like the uh, it it doesn't it doesn't make that much sense to not use limit orders um, in the DeFi world. Uh, same in the same way that um, it doesn't make much sense to not use limit orders in the uh, in the centralized exchange. Yeah, so in the end, you're developing um, a very nice application. Um, but Baldwin Group, of course, has, has more applications as an aggregator and a, a password manager. You can view your transactions without um, having to connect to Kepler. So you, you can put in your own viewing key and have them um, them query, query your information for you. And it has some other applications uh, already ready to be used. Uh, and there's a mm -hmm. token tied, of course, to, to the entire Botting Group ecosystem uh, called Bot, um, B U T T. So I guess my, my question would be is like like this launches, uh, and then what um, does uh, are there any fees that are going to be accrued? Um, what will be um, yeah? How how will this fit in the entire Botting Group ecosystem, and and will it sustain you to to develop more and more applications? Yeah, well, um, well, we'll we'll adjust that execution fee accordingly, um, to to you know to 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 try to keep it sustainable, um, and uh, and and really that's our, our our big next thing. So just getting that right and getting the number of trades going through um, should be able to sustain us. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, we'll have to wait and see until until that happens, and um, and really, uh, once we start like optimizing everything um, and, and 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 making things more cost effective, um, it, it should be in the profit sooner than later. What's up with the bot building, Steve? Every day in your daily update, you say that you're burning bot. Yeah, that is about it. <laughs> uh, it. It's it's honestly because um, I've got like a lot of friends and and such that that bought bot, and then but then they just you know they they're not like they're not confident to to jump on and and you know tried all these different pools and everything and um and at, and at this point uh it's been it's been a little while now from the bull run to the to the bear market and everything and uh and and i was weighing everything up and i thought that um the best way to do it would be to decrease the amount of butt so that the uh percentage of people that invested and, and you know didn't want to didn't want to try or, or didn't know how to use the the, uh, the farming pools their percentage technically goes up and even for the um, the you know the regular users and such and like the people that are holding tokens just for the the VIP purposes their percentage of butt is going up by doing the burn um, and also, it also means that by not having to build out another contract and interface and tokenomics and everything, it it, it decreases the amount of work and reduces the the risk of something going wrong. Um, I'm, I'm a bit, you know, the it's just like the more things you do, the the, the higher the chance that something bad will happen. 
Um, and uh, I've been burnt before by like a pretty impressive development team that were just doing things, um, building way too many contracts too fast and they made like a simple error and uh, it just crashed everything. So I'm trying pretty hard not to um, uh, write contracts if I don't have to. Why bother thinking about stacking mechanism when you can just burn the supply? Sorry? Good thought. Why think about stacking mechanism and, you know, something complex when you can just burn the supply? Yeah, exactly. Price go up. Everyone's happy. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and... It's actually a, a lot easier. and It's probably also more regulation friendly. It's also easier to understand you're not earning some like inflatable yield which only earns you an x amount of real apr it's just all the fees get burned so <laughs> over a long period of time you get more tokens in comparison to the total yeah yeah ex exactly and, and then not only that um it, it's it's quite proven that um it's good for all the holders like like look what's happening with binance um they just keep going up because they're burning and um, and no one has to do anything. You know, all you got to do is just hold their token and use it. Um, somebody, there's some other groups as well that, that do similar things. And I, I remember ages ago, I was saying to Waffle, because um, Waffle was like, man, you got to ch charge, you know, slightly higher fees for some of the products that you, that you, um, that you offer. Cause it's just too cheap really you know like like dollar here 10 cents here that sort of thing and i was like well you know there's only going to be 28 million tokens and waffle had a bit of a laugh at me because he's like 28 million is still a lot and and, and he's right it is like a lot of tokens still <laughs> <laughs> so i was like you know you know what he's right i can cut this cut this by millions and it's and it's not going to be a big deal so um so yeah we we're, we're going to i've i've got some certain numbers in mind so we'll just burn away until until it gets to a point where it it just doesn't seem like a good idea anymore but but these are our fees like these bots which are burning are these fees incoming from the applications which which come into our contract of which you are an admin or are they personal tokens like, like is there any way the community has like a, a vote over what happens to the tokens or is it just something that comes into a wallet you uh, you possess and, and you decide on whether you want to burn it or not um no just just right now it's just a it's just a personal thing i'm just um i'm just farming them and then and then um and then sending them into buttload just as like a like a security measure just so it's just as like good practice so that there's like a in case i sent it to the wrong wallet or whatever um i send it there and then um from there i'll i'll send it to to mount doom um you know just in case i'm like put a zero in and send too much or whatever i've got like a bit of a, a an insurance that i can kind of get it back if need be uh yeah and uh, i'm really thinking um at this point, if I've got to be like 100% honest, uh, I, I'll probably reconsider the whole burning thing if butt gets to like an all time high again. And then, and then we'll probably have a, a rethink about things. But until then, um, just going to keep burning away and, and, uh, and hopefully anyone that bought at any time will, will come good. Okay, so this has very little to do with the fees that are being accrued by the, the aggregator, for example, or the fees that would come from limit orders. Are they going anywhere in particular? Or um, Yeah, they're pretty much, well, for the meanwhile, um, they're pretty much going to uh, adding liquidity to the uh, bot SRAP Bitcoin pool, and then... Um, uh well apart from you know using for general expenses and then and then whatever's farmed there is being sent to um buttload 
and uh, obviously not everything, but just starting off little by little. And then um, once I get some more time, I'll, I'll reassess everything um, and then go from there. Yeah, cool. So, so you use all the fees that are aggregated uh, to actually deepen the liquidity of the pool and in the end help the protocol. So that's a good way of, of using the fees. Curious to see uh, what will evolve if a, if a lot of people start using these uh, the limit orders. Definitely, definitely. Um, I'm really yeah, happy. So, so maybe now. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I, I was just going to say, I'm really hoping that um, eventually, uh, once we get like the people confident enough, um, more and more people will will uh, um, use limit orders for for general usage, and then uh, obviously the uh, the DeFi pools are still going to be relevant and, and exist, um, but. Uh, hopefully, they'll be used mainly between for uh, people that have, you know, two tokens that they both believe in, but don't really know which one's going to do better or anything, and might as well make some fees. Um, uh, you know, because it's pretty much like a like a, D, like a DeFi liquidity pool is pretty much like a a decentralized scalping bot, depending on um you know when you take out the liquidity so it does it, it is it does still serve a good purpose um so let's say if i had uh, monero and bitcoin and and i and i was just holding them but i still wanted to earn fees or whatever uh i might just chuck them into a liquidity pool i, I don't know which one's going to do better over the long run um so there there is that still and it, there is still that sort of functionality so i'm not saying that they have no functionality but i'm saying hopefully they get used for that sort of reasoning and then um limit orders for you know just everyday use where well where people are like oh yeah i want to buy a large amount of something i might just put a limit order in and and it'll get filled by other people or or depending on uh the, the pools that are available Yeah, makes sense. Um, uh, I guess now it's it's time to quickly look in look ahead, maybe a little bit into the future. Um, is there a, a tentative launch date for for limit orders, uh, or, or is there an expectation by you of when you want to finish this? Uh, yeah. Um, it, it is like it is getting really close. Uh, to like officially being able to say, Hey, come on, everyone, come, come use it. And, and, uh, you know, we've done like a thousand or like order tests and everything looks good. Um, you know, but the, 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 uh, I'm definitely hoping in the next couple of weeks, I'll get it. I'll get my first swap happening between, um, a limit order and the, um, like a, like a D five pool. Um, currently swapping two limit orders against each other has been working fine. Um, the UI UX needs a bit of improvement. Um, the candle charts, uh, are all set up and that, and that actually took way longer than I expected. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's almost there. Like the, the bots, um, are working pretty much. Uh, are all set up as well so it's just that algorithm right now for uh figuring out um limit order, limit order versus the decks that's that's um getting the uh is kind of the bottleneck right now have you have you gone and seen um the candle chart page and everything like that and uh uh and what's available so far or uh not yet 
Uh, I've quickly checked out uh, the page the first time you, you sent it in the in the Telegram group, but for some reason I, I didn't see a lot more than uh, the window where the candle should be and stuff like that. So I didn't look anymore after that. I think it, it needs like a specific link, like you can't go through it to the bottom side. So uh, I haven't taken a second look, but I think Waffle did. Uh, yeah, well, it, yeah. It, it's getting, it's, it's, it's definitely like progressing along and, um, and it's it's like it's getting there. It's re it's really really close to getting there. So uh, um, hopefully, uh, well, I, I do like daily or every second day updates. So hopefully sooner than later, um, people will be able to get some usage out of it. It's still the smoothest swap in the in the ecosystem. So I'm still happy for that. It's always pleasant pleasing to send people the on button swap. So I mean, we just go ahead. No, as I mean, it's it's the only Dex I use, and I think most of the people who are in this ecosystem for a long time always refer people to to Button. So yeah, not really. If you, you still you still find people sending others to Siena, you're like, okay, Siena is good, but you're wasting liquidity. Like it's a service to the user to send them to button swap. I mean, as long as you do something with only shade, Shana secrets, then you can can be fine on Shana swap. Often they have the most liquid pools, but as soon as you start doing things with Ethereum, USDC, USDT, Bitcoin, you need to be using button. Otherwise, you just get wrecked. But even if even if the liquidity is deeper on Siena, if the price is better on secret swap. It's worth it. Got going on button swap, it's just in case. So maybe the the liquidity will be thin on secret swap, but the price will be better. Yep. Yeah, can't argue with that. It's just it's just correct. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, yeah. I don't know. I can't can't wait uh, to start using the limit orders and uh, set some set some uh, buys at uh, under a dollar secret if it, if it ought to happen, or maybe even lower Bitcoin. We'll, we'll see what happens. And um, I think it's um, it's cool that it's uh, both an aggregator and a limit order function because that way you can inter interuse the function. So that is really I think something people should take away from here is that you will get a good rate even uh, even if there is no counterparty because your limit order will be swapped against the DEX pool and those are available on the network. Uh, maybe even with shade swap coming up soon, um, Button could also aggregate with those pools and then if I might even look a little bit further into the future, if you're still, if you're, if Steven is actually willing to do that is, you could in theory start doing cross IBC um, Limit order fills, right? Or, or aggregator fills if you want to. Have you already looked into that? I, I haven't had a chance to look into it, but um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely would be keen to look into that. Um, and, and I don't see a reason why why not, considering um, I just saw on that, on that Kujira site that they've also upgraded the, the, the WASM. So, um, but in, in all reality, like, uh, we gotta we gotta hope for some more liquidity on on secret network and and uh you know thankfully um i think uh i think o o waffle is is uh is going to be working on that um uh, with some of the different committees and and uh, i've been approached by slabs um regarding that but uh i'm unable to because i don't actually run an, uh, a, a dex or anything um but yeah, that hopefully we'll get a bit of a boost soon with all of those and um, and uh, shade swaps coming out soon, I think. So, so yeah. Do we have a date for shade swap, uh, Earthman? I think uh, the the official statement is still somewhere in fall twenty twenty. Okay. But as far as I know, the, um, they have done a lot, uh, but they need to lock their contracts somewhere so they can get an audit. And I assume that as soon as their contracts are locked, 
we would probably get a notification. So then you know it's like one and a half months out because they need to have an audit and then change things with the audit, finish the UI and uh, upload the application. So I don't think it will be here before the start of November. If it is, then I'll be very happy. But uh, I expect it somewhere in the end of November. Yeah, hopefully it will bring some dynamics to the network with Shinobi also, I believe. I mean, it will bring stablecoin liquidity. I think that's uh, that's fairly important. So XLR bridge and shade swap sh sh should help somewhat because, uh, yeah, the current bridge really has to, to change for us to attract more liquidity. I don't think people will feel safe anymore having, uh, I don't know, thousands of uh, of uh, dollars in Ethereum or red Bitcoin uh, if it's coming through a multisig bridge. Understandable. Yeah, I mean, it's the right to. <laughs> That's called good DeFi practice. I'm still happy farming my bot. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm taking the risk. <laughs> Having a lot of uh, of wrapped Bitcoin from Ethereum on a multisig bridge, but that's fine. I was farming web Bitcoin, but not on not on the bot pool yet. But uh, maybe I'll get in. I, I, I sold all my bridged assets when the merge happened, and it didn't get back in yet. So I don't know. I'll have to do that somewhere this week or maybe next week. No, stay away. It's too dangerous. Why? What's what's going on? You know, I, 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 I'm out of the loop. Is there some sort of danger of having Ethereum bridged I'm, on? I'm not really, but th there's been a lot of talk about multisig bridges. There's there have been some hacks, but um, yeah, it's just you know how it is. Technologically, there are some better technologies nowadays. Axelor is not a multisig anymore. Right, it's like a whole chain. But uh, the one, the... yeah, that was that was. Sorry, go on. No, that was just a small joke. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, uh, well, if it's a joke, I, I don't want to. I don't want to be all serious and say that. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm a little hesitant on XLR, just because. Uh, I don't know. Like they've just come out of nowhere, and um, and like like. The, what do we what do we know about them and, and how much time have they be, been around? Um, I, I'm I'm more inclined to trust the um, the the bridge for uh, like the secret bridges just because they've been around for a while. We know who the team members are, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't I don't know. I'm I'm a little bit like uh, like is there some sort of reason why Axel has come out of nowhere and everyone's quite excited about them or, or what's going on? It, it's smooth, man. It's super smooth. From osmosis to avalanche, mm. it's amazingly good. As a, for a user, it's nice. But I think Earthman knows them. I mean, it's the... I guess your argument stands that if you... If you are using a multi-sig bridge, then the only research you really have to do, uh, besides maybe trusting the contract, is into the parties. Like if you know Secret Labs is a signer and Fickman and uh, Citadel, yeah, like they they won't they won't walk away with your funds. If they do, uh, then you know where to find them. And I guess the difference mm -hmm. with Axler is that it's the bridge is completely dependent on the consensus of the chain. So. As long as the consensus of the of the Cosmos SDK chain, which they build on, is running, uh, the bridge transfers are are being signed. So you're not dependent on on a specific team walking away with the key, but you're dependent on the code executing correctly. And seeing as the the team has ties to to Algorand, like I think some of them are are, are Algorand developers, and some others are uh, uh, I don't know similar profile as to like Guy, so people who had PhDs in cryptography or studied at MIT or whatever. So it's a, it's a well-known team, it seems, who developed a very smooth UX and, a, and a, an application which easily integrates into IBC, right? Because they can IBC their XLR assets to any chain, 
and it would be native assets. Uh, so I guess that's why uh, why a lot of applications started using it. Okay, but you you're not far far from a, a risk of um, not a malvalent hack of the multisig bridge, but more of a like one of the signatures being hacked. This already happened. So where, where I don't know what's okay. Hmm? So you're saying it, it's I not can... IBC, no, but it's uh, you at least remove the the factor where someone doesn't handle their private key correctly and simply grant someone access to the multisig and they can just drain the entire wallet in one go, uh, which was something that happened only a few weeks ago again to some entity who created their wallets in the wrong way. And that, and that makes sense. So you're saying that's the risk with the um, the, the sacred network one right now. It's a it's a potential risk of all multi sig bridges. Right, right, right. But right. yeah, and that's what I said. It's all dependent on the teams that you trust. And uh, Secret has been very, very, very open about how they designed their bridge. Like there is an FAQ on the website which simply shows these are the signers and this is how it's developed and here's the code. So. Um, yeah, something you choose to when you you bridge in. Uh, probably something a lot of people um, have to research when they actually do these kind of things. Okay. Okay. Inherently, like Axler is still at bridge. It's not like if they made a mistake in their contracts. Uh, for example, what uh, what was the other bridge called, which did something with Athmos and Diffusion? Uh, Nomad, the Nomad Bridge, they they also didn't have a multi-sig, but they just simply made a mistake in their code so someone could drain the contract. I mean, that can still happen, right? So. Yeah, I'm I'm like, I I need I need time to to kind of really uh, trust anything. So I don't know for for me, just the XLR thing. I'm I'm a I'm a little bit like, let's wait a little while before we. Uh, goal and because I, I heard um, Secret Network wanted to shut down the bridge and move um, move on to XLR, but I don't know if uh, it just seems a little risky. Seems a little risky to trust them, considering they've just come out of nowhere. Um, yeah, it's a it's a choice to be made, but um, I'm already glad that Secret will probably have a lot of native liquidity, as in. We will have Silk. Um, there are some some SNP twenty tokens. We have like Secret Shade, Button, uh, mm. Shena, who all like liquid pairs against each other. Mm. Um, if you go to Osmosis, uh, I think the highest pool is USDC and Dai, and where Bitcoin and Red Ethereum, and that's like sixty or seventy percent of the total liquidity on there. So if Axler goes down, like uh, Osmosis would just fall apart. It's a it's an existential risk. Some of these these chains take. Uh, curious to see how it evolves. I hope it never happens. And I don't wish that on any blockchain, but uh, we'll see. It's a hostile industry, that's for sure. Oh yeah, 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 big time. Well, what about what about you, Waffle? Um, I know you're you're uh, taking some action right now, getting liquidity onto the um, onto Secret Network. Um, any any uh. Uh, are you allowed to give any clues on on what you guys are thinking? Yep, I'm here. Uh, I wish I could give you some uh, some clues. Um, I know that there's been some work to track some liquidity on Secret Network, uh, but yeah, more to come in the future. Okay, I'll uh, I'll try to help with my uh, usually a uh, few secrets here and there. <laughs> <laughs> I do provide liquidity on Secret Network at my personal level. I mean, I've been trusting that bridge we were talking before, like the Secret Network one, since a long time for a lot of my portfolio. But yeah, I'm comfy. Like the sig, the signatures are like. I think it's Secret Labs, Figment, uh, who's who, who else? Citadel. Lavender, I think. No, Citadel. I think it's Stake or 
Let me quickly Google this. Give me one sec. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty trustable. So. Yeah, they're very, very, very big entities. They've been in the network from the beginning and are also in other networks, not only on Cosmos. Yeah. I found on, Sec on Secret Swap for, for, for a while on the Binance, BNB and Secret pair. So yeah, I bridged a lot of BNB. That was pretty fair. In Pigment, Staked, B Harvest, Sita One, and Secret Labs. Yeah. With Staked, of course, being this massive site uh, providing validator nodes to basically every single blockchain. Uh, Figment being the, the, the VC capital, Citadel One being the biggest Cosmos validator. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a comfy team. <laughs> but maybe to, to, to quickly um, end our talks here, um, if, you, if you can move a few months into the, into the future, Stephen, and, and what, what is the, the application or the thing that you're looking most forward to, to building? Is it a cross-chain DEX aggregation or cross-chain limit order aggregation, or do you have something others, other cool in mind uh, to build out as soon as this is finished? Uh, I, I think, I think um, probably the, uh, I, I wouldn't mind just like wrapping up some loose ends and, and, um, and then just really get having some time just to polish um and refactor a few things so I, I was gonna i was gonna approach the community to um to get some funding for uh like smart contract interface um to to be up to the level of uh you know other other products on on chains like binance smart chain and uh and ethereum where where the uh the functions for each contract are, are like ready uh, readily available so that just you know anyone can kind of look at a contract and, and interact with it relatively easily. So um, I think, and I think that would really help. Um, well, like a heap of different situations, um, uh, like the situation with the keys that everyone's struggling with, and um, and if uh, you know, let's say. Uh, there's just so, there's just so many little issues um, where if you just had like a like a like a good smart contract interface uh, like a just Swiss Army knife everything it would make everyone's lives a lot easier so I was gonna uh, propose that um, and um, yeah and that's that's really pretty much the next thing I was thinking about afterwards. Um, and then, and just generally, I was, I was gonna. Um, I have had a chat to um, like one of the other developers um, about possibly making a DEX, but it would require the community to make some big decisions and, and give up a bit as well. Like, um, you know, we really, we really thought that. Uh, you know, that we could do things to attract liquidity that. Um, the things like that Osmosis has done where they've provided um, free trading for the first several number of swaps for users or, um, you know, providing rewards in secret, um, things like that uh, needs a bit of discussion and, and, and all. But, um, yeah, that would, that would be a big community discussion whether they want to go through with it. Um, but we did want to make a proposal for that uh, coming up. Okay, sounds cool. I'm uh, curious to see what that what will evolve. Uh, if you decide to build a DEX, please make it a different curve. <laughs> just so <laughs> uh, I guess maybe I want to just plant one idea in your head because I want someone to pick this up and please do it as soon as possible because it should be something which someone in our ecosystem creates. It's please build Chainlink VRF for the entire Cosmos ecosystem on Secret Network. A simple interface which you let, let you do an interchain query where you can query a random number. You can use the, the secret RNG contracts that are already there uh, just needs a, a nice, easy to use contract interface, which other 
IBC chains can call charge like 10 secret or something and you'll be golden. <laughs> so, so you're saying just like a random number generator, um, uh, like a smart contract interface. I mean, sorry, a smart contract, random number generator on the secret network. Yeah, the, the thing is, this contract already exists. It's called Secret RNG. It was developed by DDP. I think you, you are familiar with either him or, or the, the, the application. It has uh -huh. like a, a one transaction and two transaction mode. But uh -huh. I think where the, the lowest hanging fruit is if Osmosis doesn't have true random numbers, right? Just like, sec like Secret has that, or at least private records. So. Mm -hmm. What Osmosis can do is they can query a random or like get a random number from the smart contract on Secret and have all their random numbers on Osmosis come from Secret. Uh, but for them to be able to do that, they need like a nice, nicely created contract, which is very easy to to just simply interact with from any other chain. Maybe even have a host on their own chain which does the query. So if you want to build it and make a, a big buck, please do so. <laughs> it's a very easy. <laughs> For, for IBC contracts, but it will be used indefinitely by all the one hundreds of Cosmos chains which are coming. So, right, you can, right. You can... Sorry, please go ahead, Steve. Please go ahead, Steve. Uh, I was going to ask. Um, uh, sorry, I'm a little bit out of the loop. What what does Osmosis use a um, random number generator for? Okay, maybe maybe Osmosis wasn't the best uh, example, but you can also think of Juno or any other smart contract chain for that matter. Right, right, right. So like pretty much like a, a go-to for like chance games sort of thing. Yes, or, or any like pro voting results or the enactment of certain things or uh, like a lot of things in blockchain use random numbers. Um, and the reality is that people now just pay chain link, 10 link to get a random number to initiate a seed and do stuff like that. Uh, Stargaze doesn't even have random minting because everyone can see uh, which number is being queried. Or well, if they would use secret, they would have official randomized minting. It just needs an easy contract for people to call with a, a good documentation and an easy way to do it. So if you feel up for it, uh, <laughs> please take the task. <laughs> okay, no, that's, that's that's really interesting. Um, <laughs> right, he can help you even. I think. <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, no, I'm curious to know how it works as well because, uh, like, you know, if if like, I know, the, I know the the data is encrypted from on the secret side, but let's say Juno grabs some data from their end and then it gets, you know, IBC transferred to them. Um, I guess at one point it becomes public. Uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to have a look into it. I guess I'd have to sit into one of these meetings where someone explains that. Um, oh, I guess oh, I don't even know. Um, yeah. the, the current upgrade supports um, either plain text or encrypted input. So Juno could send encrypted or plain text info to secret, but the output is always public. Right. But I guess a random number generator, that doesn't matter because you just, you basically just query secret network. You don't really query it, but like you just say, hey, secret, can I have a random number? Uh, and this random number can be public. That's not a problem. It's uh, the fact that it's generated on secret, which makes it truly random instead of pseudo random, which is uh, what these applications want. Anyway, uh, okay. <laughs> get a chat when I wake up again. For now, it's uh, it's quite late here, so I'm uh, I'm taking off. Thank you very much for being here. Um, is there anything we can do to support either you or Waffle? Then uh, you, you have a few minutes here to, to say what we can do to support you. And if not, then we'll end it here. Um, well, thanks very much for inviting me and, and hosting the hosting the event. Um, much appreciated. Uh, generally, um, uh, if you can follow us on um, on Telegram or, or Discord, and then and we give and we give regular updates and. Um, once, uh, once it's, once it's all ready, um, 
uh, or once f features are ready, you can really help out by giving them a try and and giving us some some honest feedback and um, and that's 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 really about it. Okay, sounds good. No bot validator yet, but uh, maybe maybe one day a bot and group validator. One day. <laughs> one day. Okay, I want to thank you very much. We're here every Thursday, 5 UTC, uh, unless we have Stephen on, then it's uh, a few hours later. And uh, next week, the guest is not yet known, uh, but it will be a great conversation anyway. So I hope to see you all there. And thank you very much for listening and tuning in. We'll see you in the next episode. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Steve. Good night, guys. Thank you for listening in on the Agents of the Roundtable Community AMA. Follow us on Twitter at secret underscore AOTRT and every Monday at 7 p.m. UTC in the Secret Network Discord.